galaxy is burning. Brother fights brother, and treason splits the Imperium of Man. This is the Age of Darkness. Welcome to the Remembrancer's Retreat, coming to you from within the depths of the Vengeful Spirit. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Remembrancer's Retreat, a Warhammer 30k Horus Heresy and Specialist Games podcast. My name is Jesse, I'm here today with Austin. Hey. What's going on? Oh man, I am balls deep in hobby. Yeah, tell I me really about am. it. Well, I'm not telling you anything. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, all right. I got secrets. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's going real well. I'm super enjoying it. Um, there's just been so, so much stuff. Like apart, apart from things I can't talk to you about, <laughs> so much stuff. Been even like iron space wolves and like getting mortals ready for uh, Will's event here in a while. Yeah, it's not even recent, just in a while. Yeah, it's yeah, effectively our first uh, horse heresy event at Battlegrounds since you know in twenty twenty. Yeah, no, before twenty twenty. Didn't wasn't our last one uh, December nineteen? Oh, you might be right because I think I was supposed to have the first one in yeah. like February, and uh, no, it was it was April. April. Oh, you're right. We did we did, have, we did have one in February because I was going to have it in February. We did something else instead. Yeah. Kutak then, was supposed to be in. Yep, March, and we had this whole narrative. Had, I got so many, <laughs> so many books just sitting at home. Yeah, that's all right. Will is kicking us back off. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. You know, hopefully, inshallah, should the pandemic hold, um, with the lovely doubles event at Battlegrounds. I don't know if there are tickets left. There might be. If you go onto uh, Facebook and go to Battlegrounds, uh, Midlothian, Richmond, Virginia. Oop, that's me. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Battlegrounds. Yeah, if you go over to Battlegrounds on Facebook, you should be able to find a link there. There we go. Horse Heresy doubles and drafts. There might be some tickets left. I can't tell from this side, but if yeah, you go I'll... into that event and go, there's a link down there where you can purchase your tickets up front. So. Yeah, it currently has 18 people responded, and I think there's 20 tickets, 30 tickets. Mm -hmm. I think 20 is the max 20, right now. 20 is so. the max, so there's still a couple of shots le spots left, mm -hmm. and... Uh, It'll be a good time because, man, the only thing I love more than like wargaming is doubles wargaming. And the only thing I love more than doubles wargaming is random doubles wargaming. Yep. 1500 points, uh, modified crusade list where it's one HQ and one troop, and everything else is go hog wild with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Blind draft. Don't know who you're going to be playing with. Yep. I'm not even sure if, I mean, we're, we're normally so incredibly narrative with our. Like we got we got that way. I'm not even sure if Will is dividing you up between loyalists and traitors. It might not be. I think it's just a just a smash well, together, you know. Welcome back, boys. Mm -hmm. Get to know everyone again. So I'm looking forward to it. And it is a Sunday, and that's gonna be yep, November seventh at noon. And Although we do always pregame. Yep. Uh for those of you that are twenty one and older. <laughs> hey, I don't know. Yep. Maybe yeah. Manny's listening. Yeah. Billiards at the bar beforehand, usually around 11 o'clock. Everyone gets a drink, then we mosey on over to Battlegrounds, roll some dice. It's a good time. So in the news for Horse Heresy this week, yeah, Will and I had briefly discussed it and brushed on it last Wednesday. And I'm going to call, I made a prediction that the uh, Trader book was going to come out with the Iconoclast, and I was right. It was a bold statement. <laughs> I just put two and two together. Because, you know, GW, GW releases always make sense. Connecting so. those dots. I mean, it's true. It could have been, <laughs> here's a light titan mm -hmm. madness. Uh, but yeah, she's big. She's sexy. Trainer Legios. I mean, everybody's been waiting for it since Loyalist Legios was like announced. Mm -hmm. So we could probably expect this to come on uh, pre-order probably next week or two week after i imagine yeah it shouldn't be long and i actually that's one of the things i wanted to look up because yeah, i don't think they had a release on here yet yeah there's no release date set out but the uh, fact that they were showed all this pretty sure it's coming soon yeah but yeah that war master iconoclast that thing looks nasty there's some worry that you know because it's all melee which i don't know if it's necessarily all melee i mean, I mean the big weapons is, are like all is a strong word for something that has the capability to take two plasma blast guns and a pile of missiles. Fair. Uh, 
Like, it'll still get the job done, boys. Um, but yeah, no, I I think it'll probably have a couple of dirty tricks to get itself places quickly. Um, Good chance, especially depending on what kind of warp shenanigans. Yeah, like you can the get- warp shenanigans you can give it, the legio you take, like. You can make a something that's as slow as a warlord or or one of these big kids uh, go real fast, and that's enough to just scare the hell out of people. Even when it's only for like a turn or two, mm-hmm. you're like, oh god, you can move like eighteen inches, and like Jesus, <laughs> scary. Yeah, but yeah, corrupted titan rules. Yeah, that's what people. That's, that's that's what the people really want to talk about. Yep. Um, it's happened. They they've been teasing these for quite a while. Um think the first mention of them with with the Psy Titans um, like three books ago now, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Where they're like, oh, it does extra stuff against Corrupted Titans. And everybody's like, (gasps) Corrupted Titans? Corrupted Titans? Well, that'll have to be in Ryza. And it wasn't in Ryza. And that was so (laughs) sad. But we were like, ooh, Loyalist Legios, they've got this stuff. We're going to get Corrupted Titans and it's amazing. Which it's really cool because I got to be honest, I've never really seen them like pre-set up rules like that before yeah um even in the old titanicus and the old epic like you get like a bane lord which is just a warlord with a tail (laughs) um but nothing this crazy Uh, they teased a few and there does seem to be a like there's a whole bunch of weird stuff you can do to them um you can corrupt them uh, the thing that they they have a couple of things that they talk about. The first one is warp conduit. Uh, a Titan may be upgraded with this base mutation for 20 points. Once per game during the combat phase, a Titan with this mutation may conjure an etheric tempest. If they do so, choose a unit within 12 inches of the Titan. The chosen unit can be of a different unit to the one to- chosen as a target of the Titan's weapon, but must be within the Titan's front arc and within line of sight. The unit suffers a single strength 10 hit against a location of your choice, ignoring voids and ion shields. That is nuts. That's just See that knight? Oh. Don't wanna. Oh, I didn't think about the knights. Mm. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. This is this is just exploding a lot of night a lot of the littler knights. I was they, also thinking coup de gras on whatever poor little uh, titans uh-huh. just barely hanging on. Yeah, like, oh damn, I missed that reaver and yeah, let me finish it. Finish me, it off. Yeah. Or even like, hey, let me crack something open. Like, you know, you can, it's a base mutation. It doesn't seem to have any restrictions as long as base mutation doesn't have a restriction, but like it's a base mutation. It seems pretty basic, right? Yeah. Uh, so get you a pack of three Warhounds. Give them all this. <laughs> oh. They don't even need a plasma blast gun. Like they yeah. could be rolling around with mega bolters and you just crack crack the shell with a couple of these suckers oh my god uh and then bring the hate don't like it but the the interesting thing for me is this is a base mutation which implies there's going to be like levels of crazy yeah so as cool as it is you might not have to take just one Mm -hmm. or maybe there's some sort of like enhanced versions depending on what kind of mutations you choose Uh who knows Uh i'm excited to find out yeah, another, uh, let's see, the Awakened Entity is the apparently the uh, alternate version of the Awakened Machine Spirit for Corrupted Titans. And one of them that they showed was called Blood Hungry. So I guess if you have to roll on the Awakened Machine Spirit table and get this, apparently the Corrupted Titan immediately moves a number of inches equal to its base speed characteristic straight forwards towards the closest unit within its front arc, stopping before it collides with anything. If there are no units, friend or foe, within its front arc, it turns 45 degrees towards the nearest enemy unit instead of moving, stopping before it collides with anything, or if the enemy enters its front arc. Then, if there is a unit, friend or foe, within one inch and within its front arc, it makes a smash attack against that unit with a dice value of D3 plus one. Which is <laughs> can be, is the downside of bringing three corrupted warhounds to uh, go do rude things to people with, is that your pack mates might get a little... Trigger happy. Yeah. And I think, so, I'm trying to remember the Awakened Machine Spirit table for regular Titans. I don't think there's one that allows them to move the full movement. It's like a D6, isn't it? Uh, Yeah, it's, and now I kind of want to bring a book because I said it and now I'm I'm second guessing myself. But yeah, I don't think it's a full movement. There certainly isn't one uh, that lets 
has the possibility of hurting your own engine. Yeah. Uh, you guys on your own side, anyway. You might hurt yourself by just standing there and dying. But um, <laughs> it's the price you pay. Yeah. And that's just one. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, think about, you know, a Warhound going crazy and then move. Go ahead. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and move my eight inches. Yeah, right. Or, I mean, even that, hey, you know, I've got a punchy reaver uh, set up to cover my corrupted warlord. And the corrupted warlord has gone crazy and just smashed into its back with D3 plus one <laughs> warlord smash attacks. Yeah. Great. Of course, it could also run into the enemy warhound that's got up under its voids and just beat it to death on accident. <laughs> so, you know. Sorry about that. There's goods and bads. Yeah. Uh, the corrupted titans also have their own personal traits, which is great. Um yeah, I don't really think Beta Garmin is a Titan Death the Spoiler anymore. It's been out for a while, but Titan Death Spoiler. Uh, the Corrupted Titans in that book have their Princep just sort of in there. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of just kind of stuck up in there. I would say welded, but with flesh. So, yeah. Um, and of course, some of the in the 40K universe, some of the Corrupted Titans are just straight up like. There's a demon in there, right? Like no. that idiot thousand son who got his Titan possessed. Who was that guy? God. I don't remember the names of thousand sons. I play space wolves. <laughs> They're just fodder. <laughs> they deserved it. Anyway, that thing too, like just one guy in there and then a demon gets it and then everything goes to shit. Um, but anyway, so you have personal traits so you can take uh, instead of your princeps and yours kind of table, they can go off this. Uh, one of them is Tormentor. The warp entity delights in inflicting pain upon its foes, savoring their suffering as it picks them apart. When making a targeted attack against a titan, the princeps titan adds one to the result of all hit rolls it makes against a location that has not suffered critical damage. This is in addition to any negative modifiers. So yeah, you're calling shot for minus one instead of... Yeah, or for two. free in close or, combat, right? Yeah, which you're still doing in close... Well... It's a minus one if for melee. Like gun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Granted, you can't attack anything. Well, that hasn't suffered critical damage. Yeah, so. it could have yeah. taken a couple of pings, and that's fine. You know, you still get that plus one. Uh, I like this a lot. It's flavorful. Um, it's certainly not useless, but it also doesn't, like, unless the other ones are just garbage. It doesn't seem like an auto take, right? It's just like a solid choice. Yeah. Little buff. Enjoy your day. And then there's apparently additional mutations, which they put a capitalized A there. So I wonder if that is stuff you take on top of the base mutations like we were talking about. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so we got like uh, one of the ones they showed her is Daemonic Bile. The warp entity delights in inflicting pain upon its foes, savoring their suffering as it picks them apart. Wait a minute. That's the, that's the same thing as Tormentor. Oh, boy. Look, this isn't... We're not there yet. Oh, boy. All right? <laughs> this is still the, you know, the beta. All the rules are right. The, the fluff guys need to catch up. Yep, yep. Uh, not the printers yet. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's out of the printers by this point. But anyway, any <sighs> corrupted titan may be upgraded with a demonic bile mutation for 15 points. Once per round during the combat phase, a titan with this mutation can spew demonic bile. Daemonic Bile counts as an additional weapon and follows the rules for attacking as normal. Daemonic Bile has a short range of T, long range of D, dash, <laughs> dice value. It uses of, a flavor template. Yep. Dice value of uh, D3, strength 5, and the Firestorm and Fusion traits. This mutation cannot be used if the Titan has suffered critical damage to its head. Eh, I like that. Uh, Daemonic Bile is unaffected by Titan Legion rules, such as Legio and Furnace's Master of Flame trait. Maniple rules, such as the Ignis Light Maniple, and cannot be upgraded with war gear, such as the Legio and Furnace's Clinging Phosphex. So yeah, template, D3, Strength 5, Firestorm, and Fusion. That fusion makes it amazing. Yeah, because that's effectively the melt-up rule for yeah. tight. Yeah. You're rolling D10s for damage. Good lord. Uh, I mean, dice value of D3, right? So it's a little random. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but the average is a Strength 10 hit, which ain't bad. Like that'll, yep. And I'm um, assuming with the temp, so T for template. So do you mm -hmm. still try? And I haven't really used any template weapons, so I like imagine you auto hit like normal. Auto hit like normal. So like if you had a little pile of uh, knights around, they, they each take a D three hit. Each, and that is an interesting. 
Uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an interesting thing because normally a flamer weapon, the first thing it hits gets the full value and everybody after that gets one. Okay. Um, so I think that's what they're doing here. Um, cause I, I, I think that might just be the rule firestorm. So the first guy is going to take full D three yeah. and the rest will take, uh, just one. Um, but strength five fusion, just damn 15 points once a round. Yep. That's... Any, any corrupted Titan. Yeah. Again, you could put them on a thing of a uh, war hounds. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Again, like this, this is great. Light Titans. Really? Unless, unless there are some like big, big kid only ones, which wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Wonder with all these things coming out, if they're going to do some upgrade kits. Yeah. Some demon knight up or demon, uh, Titan upgrade kits. Yeah. I'd really love that. And I can't wait to see just, you know, everybody's oh, are, own kit bash. People are already going crazy on yeah. some of the Titanic things I'm on. I'm looking at them like, damn. Um, yeah, this, this one just seems rude. And I like that they, they and, didn't even try for this one, which I, I like when I say they didn't try, mm. but they didn't try to balance it with every permutational combination of the rules. They're just like, look, yeah. this is a cool thing. Mm -hmm. It's Don't. already real good. I, this is it. Yeah. Don't I mean, try to mix it with your Legio bullshit. Don't try to min max it with your <laughs> mana and war gear stuff. It's yep. just good. Take it. It's cool. Yep. And yeah. With this, obviously it's a Nurgle type of stuff, demonic pile. <laughs> so I'm really curious to see what the other ones are. So I'm imagine like, you know, the Titans with the tail. Zinch demons also are known for spewing magical shit all over you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, see, you get that tail. I want to just, tail. Barfing rainbows. Oh, what? Yeah, just yeah. all over you. Yeah, probably. I'm guessing that's going to be a corn thing. The Potentially tail? Slanesh. I, the tail is traditionally feel, cor a cornate. Yeah, I feel Slanesh like, will probably have like claws or something. Yeah. Oh, slicey. Really, swords. I want uh, corn to, or uh, Slanesh to have something with the legs, get you more speed. Good point. Yeah. More speed or an extra turn or something. That'd be cool. Uh, and then I forget where. Dude. I think further up. I feel like we missed it. What's that? There's a slot in here that talks about uh, how there are three different alliances or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not... There's a kind of class. I don't remember seeing... Oh, here we go. Maybe. So the yeah, Trader uh, Legions... Or one of three general alliance options. So right here. So yeah. the first thing they say... Uh, trader Legion stuff to everything you need. Choose a battle group that appeals to you, whether you choose Name Trader Titan Legion or Knight Household or one of the three general alliance options. Allegiance. Uh, or allegiance options. Each comes with its own fearsome abilities. Hmm. And that's what's interesting um, because obviously this is a Trader Legio book, right? Where there's no loyalist shit in there. Was there any oh. Trader stuff in the loyalist Legio book? Yeah, there was. There was. Because we have the, you know, Loyalist, Traitor, and Black Shield. Mm -hmm. I wonder so if this could, is what it's talking about. It could be that. It could be that. I would be happier <laughs> if it was like the various levels of like traitors. Yeah. Right? Because there's kind of your bog standard. We're for Horus. Yeah. But we don't hold with any of that warp shenaniganry, right? Like some standard Iron Warriors level stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are the Titan Legios that are just all into warp nonsense yeah, the demons, demons demons and uh then there's the guys that are more dark mech like yeah. maybe we don't shove a demon in here but what if we put an ai in in the titan right. that seems good why does it want to call itself skynet i don't understand <laughs> um but either way uh it'll be really good and like bare minimum uh, if you are like a loyalist or a black shield and have no desire, it is chaos nonsense. Um, I would expect in the war gear section that they would have a few more generic war gear upgrades. Yeah. Something to get it. And, you know, knowing what your opponent has too isn't the worst thing in the world either. Yeah. And I mean, it's really cool. Like even for those, those of you that like have all the books, um, like there's new fluff well, for the loyalist legios, like I'm assuming here. But there's new fluff for the Legios that are in there. All the Legios are in there, which is just super handy. Like, I can't wait. Like, there's been a couple of people uh, that have just started getting into Titanicus recently mm -hmm. that have been like, oh, Austin, like, what Legio should I play? 
Like, and I'm like, oh, well, you just buy the Lawyer's Legio book and you can just pick. And they're like, oh, I want to trade Trader. And I'm like, ah, oh, God damn it. Can you, <laughs> can you hold off for like a month? Like, keep this energy. Wait yeah. a month. Yeah. <laughs> just hold steady. Yeah. Uh, but I'm super excited for it. It looks real good. Is that like, what is that? Triple auto cannons in the, uh, the shoulders or the armpits? Or is that Flamer? That I looks like a Flamer. I think it's the Flamer. Yeah. Yeah. And then the macro gat on top. What are you going to hit all the way up there? I guess other war masters. Whatever the fuck it wants to. <laughs> Let's crank the nozzle it's up. Promethium, right? It's a liquid. It, it That's true. That's true. Boy, it looks cool. God, can you imagine being some fucking guardsman on the ground and that thing walks up and you just, God, <laughs> shit. Fuck, all right. Yeah. Well, you'd be that, that one guy in the mortise cover. It's like, hey, aim for it. Sucks. Shoot at Alaska that. At that point. <laughs> Oh, those tight. Yeah, the knights in the front. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of... Uh, I don't know what that knight in the front's holding right there. I can't... Oh, it's a fist. It's a claw, it's a claw. of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one That's the one thing that makes me a little sad. They didn't give anything away uh, upgrade-wise Yeah. in that art, but it is great Which art. Which they have to. They have to soon. There's... I got to look at my demon, or my titans and see what kind of uh, empty spots there are to put stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> like, were they ready for this? I don't know. Yeah, no, this this is going to see the uh, final unveiling of my night house. Oh. Uh, I've worked so long on it. <laughs> got a test, like, got a test night done, did all sorts of conversion work, did all sorts of conversion work to the base, uh, and then just didn't paint anymore because, like, Armies on Parade wasn't a thing. You know, I kind of, like, killed, yeah. killed the yeah. motivation a little bit. Sure. Um, then we've had so much other stuff going on. Mm-hmm. But this should bring it back, mainly because I really like my conversion idea, and I know somebody's going to steal it if there's a million other knight convert, you know? like Yep, got to get in there quick. Quick, put your demonic knights out. Ah, fuck, Austin, we've seen this 80 times. I, I did it in 2019, I promise. Yeah, yeah, sure, Austin. Fuck. <laughs> so I took pictures beforehand. I'm an internet personality. I wouldn't lie to you. Put a newspaper next to it. Take those pictures. <laughs> Today's date. <laughs> You just took a picture of an old of an old paper. <laughs> Can't win. Can't win. No, nope. this is the truth. Yeah. So as far as other heresy stuff right now, it's a little on the thin side this week. I mean, I say thin. We've been getting a decent drip feed over the past month, month and a half. Yeah, it's been coming. It's been coming. I've been liking it. Uh, and actually, that's something I was actually just talking to Jesse listeners uh, when we were talking. Like, oh, what, what new heresy stuff has come out since mm-hmm. the last time we talked? I'm like, man, there's been a ton of stuff. It's been this, right? Like that's really the only thing. Um, although I will give a shout out to Aeronautica Imperialis. Yes, I will uh, be with uh, the Space Marine stuffs. I will be picking up these. Make ships. Marine small again. Uh, <laughs> there's a flight of Ziffins in there. In yeah. the new starter kit, they which means you great. know there'll be its own if you don't want to bother with dumb Eldar. And the Storm Eagle. And the Storm Eagle. Did we ever determine if the Storm Eagle was a heresy release or was it an Imperial armor release? I. Don't think we ever actually looked that up. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Listeners, if you know, let us know. But the Ziffen certainly was a heresy release. Yeah. Uh, and I think it is telling. Of where they're going. Of where they're going, that it's not like the 40K flyers. Because mm-hmm. whatever you say, like whether Storm Eagle's not like was originally a 40 K thing or not. It's certainly a forge world thing. And that mm-hmm. puts it, you know, you don't, you don't see them in 40 K armies. Yeah. You just don't. Uh, Classic Ziphons, which would be cool, mm-hmm. but, uh, mm-hmm. not a thing, not a thing. Um, except for this one, this one's in plastic. Yeah. This one's in plastic. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> of course. Of course. But, uh, just the fact that they took kind of iconic heresy flyers for this mm-hmm. makes me real excited. Uh, because maybe they've got some other iconic heresy stuff and tiny scales. Give hope. me epic. <laughs> we can Sorry, only hope. Got it. Got excited. Got excited. Yeah. Give it to me. <laughs> really would be curious to see what they do with infantry at this scale. Because I want to see it. Be delightful. Yeah, I will definitely be picking up a couple squad. Yeah, this will get me into Aeronautic Imperialis. Yeah, and you can paint them to match your epic army, mm-hmm. and it'll be delightful. Mm-hmm. Exciting. Although I got to say, the rules are a little wonky i have uh, no idea how to play so well it's just that the well i say rules but really only one stuck out at me mm. uh the ziffin has three hull points okay 
Uh, a thunderbolt has three. A lightning has two. Mm-hmm. So for some reason, this is kind of a heavy attack. Like, you know, it's a little yeah. bit more resilient than I'd expect. Um, it's like the X-Wing. <laughs> yeah. 40K. Plus, also, apparently, you can take, uh, like, uh, Tech Marines to, once again, get it. Yeah. <laughs> once- fix it. Fix it. Technical knock. Quick. Yep. But, yeah, I can't wait to get a little tiny plastic Storm Eagle in my hands. Yeah. Maybe a couple. Oh, yeah. I think... How, uh, how many Storm Eagles does it take to, <laughs> to, to carry two companies of Space Wolves? We're going to find out. Yeah, I'm not sure how many they come in a box. Uh, it's three but Ziffen look, and two Stormies in the start in the start, set, I think. But I think uh, if I saw correctly on, let's see, in a previous article, they kind of showed the box oh, sets. Oh, there it away. is. Uh, oh, no, that's which faction are you? No, no. Let's see. Excuse me, listeners, while I'm going through this thing here. Ba, ba, ba. So many articles. I need more heresy, though. I'm so ready. Oh, yeah, there was the Vansar Augmech as well. Here we go. Here we go. Aeronautica. Oh, that's right. It's coming out this week? This weekend? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, God. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so the starter set, which I guess I need because I don't have the rule booker. <laughs> no, wait. I got the uh, no, I got the original set. So the, Yeah, the rule book could be the same. Yeah, so we should um, be good there. And it's got a mat and the same come, size. And if you wait, you know two weeks for the kids to come out individually. They'll have the cards and whatnot. Yeah. So like, Uh, here we go. Or you can just buy the space Marine, you know? Yep. So like this, when they show the individual's flights, they're showing six Ziffins. Uh, They copy and paste an awful lot. (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm betting six Ziffins in the, uh, in the, in the original, like the, Separate no, box. They had oh, in the separate box. Yeah, I don't, we can buy them separately. I don't think so because I want to say the orc ships are only in three packs. Thunderbolts are in pairs. Hmm. Marauders are in pairs. So yeah, I. I, I can't imagine a six not pack getting the storm eagles is a uh, two and, separate. No, the the storm eagles will probably be two a kit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ziffins, and that's the other thing. Like the Ziffins, they said are like twenty four points a piece, mm-hmm. and I can't imagine they'd be like. Here's one box and twice the amount of flyers that you need for a standard game. <laughs> How much is a standard game? Um, well, like a hundred points is kind of the the like the starter equivalent, right? Gotcha. Like you can do, I think, like two fifty is kind of the biggest I've done and enjoyed myself. Like there yeah, comes a point. It's kind of like only, X- there's only but so much space on the board to play. Well, <laughs> and in your brain, right? It's kind of like X-wing when you're planning out like picking maneuvers for each individual ship. Once you have too many ships, you're like, ah, well, I know. Planes one and two are doing this. What was fucking four doing again? Oh, that? What, what right. idiot picked that? <laughs> but yeah, I'll I'll certainly be getting the uh, aircraft and Aphis pack for Adeptus of Stardis. Yeah. Because, uh, it, it, I mean, it's a fun game. It it suffers from not being quite as good as Necromunda or Epic. And now that I'm, you know in my thirties with a wife and kid on the way. I only have but so much time for gaming. So Fair. like this is the game I have a bunch of models for and don't play. Yeah. Um, but they are a ton of fun to paint. Uh, and it is a, it's a good beer and pretzels game. Like if you play that yeah. hundred point game, like it's just enough thinking to keep you interested, but not a lot to break your brain. And like uh, me and Will were talking uh, last week, being on a hex turned me off at first. But then when you realize that you don't have to worry about, knocking three degrees off a ship and completely throwing off your plan mm-hmm. next turn. I see, I see the <laughs> positives now and it's, I'm not as a uh, opposed to it. Yeah. Uh, and I think like a, I think it's like a frontline gaming. They make a hex mat that you can roll out and put over like your previous game mats. Yeah. Just like, like a clear hex grid. Mm-hmm. That's what I need to get. Cause this, this game is a lot more fun on like kind of a four by four, four by six where there's more room and a team game would be pretty cool. Ah, oh, man, it reminds me. So what What I've always wanted, I haven't been able to do it with this yet, because mm-hmm. again, play a million games. Sure. <laughs> um, but there's a World War One fighter game called Wings of Glory. Yeah. That's yeah, also on that. Hex, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I used oh, to play- is it on Hex? Yeah. It's it on, used to not be on Hex. I well, the, the guys I played with, you know, the old okay. Grognards had it on Hex. Oh, okay. And uh, we'd play on like a four by 10, four mm. by eight. Mm-hmm. And they'd get like 14 or 15 people. And everybody had one plane. That's pretty cool, actually. And you had, like, 30 seconds to pick your maneuver. <laughs> and, like, 
go because you know yeah try to get 16 old nerds to play a game it, yeah. talk you think <laughs> yeah you need one person just watching the clock yep um so that's really i thought it'd be a lot of fun to do for something like this yeah be, be a little fast and furious you get you get a lot of respawns in there yeah but i think it'd be a ton of fun <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i checked the uh website the uh the thunderbolts came in packs of four did they yeah when why the hell do i have six then did you get the starter set with two uh... and maybe picked up a box that must be what I'd done. All right, so maybe there are six in a box. That would make me happy. I'll say also this uh, on the because that's two, two or three units for Epic, depending on what mm. you're playing. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the card deck boxes. I really like the uh, the Salamander Pilot. That's something new that I haven't seen before, and yeah. it's, it's kind of cool. Look at him go! Nice and flying slick. things. Yeah, for a chapter that doesn't use jetpacks <laughs> or jump packs or bikes or speeders at all. He likes being in the sky. Yeah. He's pretty slick. And if anybody cares, there's also some Eldar involved. Yeah. We, yeah. we don't. Silly Eldar. But uh, actually, come back up to those dice. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It's kind of standard Imperial Yeah, it's like silver a dice. skull with an iron halo over it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the Eldar dice are kind of interesting. I don't know if it's the camera light or what, but they kind of have like a bone Yeah, they're, they're highlight. A wraith, a wraith bone yeah. dice. Yeah. Okay. Gold effect wraith bone. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not too uh, yeah, not too excited about the dice, but it's been a while. Just, you know, ever since they released the squig dice, everything's just been downhill from there. You're not wrong. You those those you are can't delightful. top the squig dice. Those are absolutely <laughs> delightful. Uh, yeah, the only problem mat. is these damn tiny mats they insist on playing. Well, maybe you can, yeah, yeah, because they're they're like a three by three, which is just cramped. Mm-hmm. But, but you know you get your it's buddy on a coffee and you table, put it together. So, yeah. yeah, never get a buddy and put two mats side by side. They just go crazy. But no, I, I think what I'm going to do is invest in one of those clear hex. Yeah, and uh, and the ground assets are coming back, yep. which is also super fun. Also great for Titanicus. Yeah, because holy crap, they look so good. It it is they are really interesting for Titanicus. They're great little objective markers, little nuke silos. Uh, they got a Manticore missile battery, Hydra, flak guns. Which are, I guess the stuff is on the left is orc. It yeah, they're, just they're the enough. orc versions. Yeah. Just like um, they have pile they have like a quad mega like yeah. super big shooter. I don't know, <laughs> but then they've got like a flak eighty eight equivalent, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I think you might be able to use for imperial stuff for epic I or like or Titanicus. Yeah. It's just like a the battle cannon. Yeah, or at least just real nice terrain. Yeah, but you know if you're a trader and you like your things a little grungier. Mm-hmm. Good value there. There's the Necromunda upgrades for Vansar. Yay. God, they got a freaking shoulder mounted multi melter. <laughs> Just obscene. As much dis- what you, what? as much disrespect as is possible to have. I mean I have imagine taken, you're I've, just a straight you're just a you're just a freaking, you know, ganger just roaming around. I got my stub pistol. Little juve just trying to round a corner. This guy just Walks around with a multi melta, shoulder, shoulder mounted, and just shoulder mounted, pulls the trigger. Just, holy just, shit! Bye. I mean, I guess you need those for the uh, the flesh terrors, or not the flesh terrors. The uh, what are the uh, the corn eight? corpse grinders? Corpse grinders, yeah, yeah, and the fucking enforcers. Yeah, where yeah. where's your two up armor, God? Now, <laughs> Jared, somewhere in those ashes, and of course, the nurgling plush, Woo-hoo. and or greater demon nurgling plush. Greater demon plush. That's true. Like, you know, put them on a smaller a, size. Put them on a big old base, and suddenly you got a pre-painted, uh, <laughs> great, great unclean one. It's a GW model. It counts. <laughs> it counts. Damn it! Bring it to the tournament. Yeah, it didn't come with a base, so I could just put it on the mat, right? <laughs> just like a vehicle. Jesus Christ! <laughs> this is why we don't let Jesse play in 40k tournaments. No, the, the whack is too strong. <laughs> Good deal. But yeah, that's all the uh, the news of the day. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about this. Because uh, I, for, for my 1500 for Will's event, I'm just bringing shitty beastmen, and I apologize to whoever I'm playing. Uh, get get stuck playing next to. Um, bless you, for I will bring 100 bodies, none of which can do any damage. <laughs> so yeah, this, uh, this will be the first time I actually play with Dark Angels since the book nine came out with more than 1,000 points. So I get to spread my wings a little bit. Dark angels are dark angels are kind of hard to play at low point levels, yeah. just because the sheer amount of uh, 
tax you got to pull on them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. But being a blind doubles, I'm not as, uh, let's just say I'm not as opposed to being mean with my lists. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely wanted to bring interrupters. Got to. Um, yeah, and with that, I'm actually going to go ahead and try the Dreadwing Rite of War. That being said, I will definitely be asking my all the people at the table is, do you want me to turn this whole thing into difficult terrain? Before we play. <laughs> no, Jesse. I would not. <laughs> but, um... Got four rhinos with no dozer blades. Of course not. <laughs> but that being said, um, that with the dread wing allows me to take uh, interrupters as troops or destroyers, but I have interrupters. And, well, I've seen plenty of people take uh, uh, termites. I'm going to go a little fancy and use some models that I haven't actually really brought to the table yet. So instead of uh, putting interrupters... And termites, I'm going to work on bringing them in on a storm eagle. Sexy. You know, my old man used to say, don't walk if you can ride and don't ride if you can fly. <laughs> so I'm excited to see how that goes. It's going to look nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my storm eagle is about 90% painted. My interrupters are rocking and ready to go. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to see how we feel because my, my heavy weapon squad for these, the, the Kutak Irregulars, mm -hmm aren't like i'd still need to finish converting some and then obviously paint the whole thing yeah uh, so you may be spared the horror that is ap3 heavy flamers yeah coming out of great. a super heavy that ain't great. <laughs> but that would also be hilarious oh it's so <laughs> so rude <laughs> it is i mean that's just about as rude as me just launching what's the strength on those flamers uh strength five okay so actually still a little bit rude. well yeah I'm strength four with AP two, so yeah, D three plus one, three. yeah, both kind of rude. Of course, the difference lie. is I your AP concerns me not at all. Yeah, it could have been AP three, AP four, but who cares? Is it strength six? No, oh, that's great. <laughs> Take that five up, feel no pain. Yeah, good deal. Yep, yep, I'm super excited for it. Mm -hmm. Yep, and just thinking, yeah, maybe making the second list of a uh, lion and Primarch's chosen. See if the opponents want to play against a Primark. And I will. I mean, it's a, a 3,000 point game yeah, on I mean, the either side. So at that point. You disrespectful. Know. Um, no, shit, not at all. I, I might be bringing a Macarius. So, like, what, what do I know? <laughs> um, all that? Actually, I'm not sure if uh, Lords of War in the standard. Uh, I, might I, think, I think one is. I think you're safe. In the Crusade? If I can fit it into a 1,500 point list anyway. Yeah, I don't know how many points it is because it's like, what, is it a 25% limit? Yes. Which might affect it because I don't know if you're going to put, if you put the 25% against the 3,000 or the 1,500. Yeah, it's something to ask Will about because mm -hmm. uh, that would give me 375. And I don't know how much a Macarius is off the top of my head, but. Not to rain on your parade, but I'd imagine it'd be 1,500 point as the limit because then you'd have other people taking. Yeah, because yeah. you'd, you'd need to account for if two people decide to be as dick as I'm thinking of. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's fine. Mm. Yeah, I just got to figure out my uh, anti-armor side, and I think I'll be good to go. Yeah, which is the reason I want to make Aries Vanquisher, because I have no armor solutions yeah. for that list at all. You can always bring the trusty Leviathan. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Although, let's see. I also got the Sakaran, and I haven't pulled out the uh, the Plasma Punisher yet, or the Plasma... Mm -hmm. Oh, the Omega? The Omega, yeah. Yeah, that's what you should bring. Yeah, I haven't pulled that out yet. I, I need to get the airbrush out and get the uh, the plasma. Maximal plasma. Yep, 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 yep. I'm all about it. That'd I'm all about fun. it. And again, another model that I haven't actually played yet, so. Yeah, that's what happens when there's two years of pandemic. You get a whole <laughs> damn book and no armies to play <laughs> against. But soon. Mm -hmm. Soon. Yeah, I'm excited. I feel like we had something else to talk about. Let's see. We got Titanicus. Talked a little Necromunda, so we got our specialist games out of the way. Ta uh, Aeronautic Imperialis. Yeah, we even went Aeronautic Imperialis. Yeah, we did the full gamut today. Yep. Uh, Battlefleet Heresy. Anything new on those? No. Um, although... I think Steven's working on some new additions to the book. Uh, so. Yeah, we're putting the Solaria back in, because uh, Steven was lazy and left it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said it. Steven's not going to listen to this. That's what he gets for not being here. <laughs> In no way was that a joint decision. Um, 
that and like some minor, as, as you well know, the, the minor edits and updates and corrections for yeah, no. people pointing things out to us. I feel like if GW we, has a whole you know group of people doing stuff and editing, you know, if we got a few minor issues yeah, if, with three people doing this on their spare hobby time and not full time, I think we did pretty good. Yep. We are super grateful to people that are pointing out our many errors because, well, that just means six months from now when somebody discovers Battlefleet Heresy for the first time and clicks on our link, they'll think, wow, what a professional setup. <laughs> there aren't even any errors. Yeah. And that's the best part. We'll actually fix those errors instead of wait, linger for 15 months. And we will. No, put a new no edition 12 out. 12 month FAQ that just complicates your life. Not here. <laughs> Not I mean, Battlefleet I Battlefleet Heresy. I got to carry these 10 printed sheets with me forever I go for the next three years. Come on. Not until the C and D hits anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness! But yeah, that'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, if everything goes well, and you know, here's hoping that the numbers will stay down. Yeah, get back into get a heresy event. Reprobates, please get vaccinated. We'll have some more heresy events down the pipe. I think. Yep. Uh, Stephen and I were actually just talking. Um, about what was to be the Battlefleet Heresy event for Nova 2020, mm-hmm. um, about maybe running that at like Battlegrounds instead, just because, you know, Nova 2022, got other stuff going on. Yeah. Um, but we put a lot of effort into that. We made some stuff. We did some things. So we might just run it on our own. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? Stop <laughs> us. And you get money for prize support and everything. Yeah, I mean, like we've got got all sorts of stuff going on. So yeah, that, that might that might turn out to be a thing here um, at some point in like January, February time frame. I guess. Be, yeah, um, we so said that before, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'd also like to finally get Kutak done. Yeah. Before the new edition drops and ruins the book. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so be we'll like see. passing out old <laughs> rule books for old editions. <laughs> Just giving them away. <laughs> giving them away. Son of a bitch. It was $100 to print these. <laughs> Pay generously by our patrons. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's what happens. <laughs> the new edition comes out. I just mail them to the patrons. It's fine. Um, but that being said, when the new edition comes out, I think you'd be starting up a new army? Jesse. And sexy Mark VI? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it'll still be Space Wolves. Okay, I, well, that's what I meant. No, a, different, I, a different legion. I am constitutionally incapable of playing a different marine army. That's fair. Uh, in heresy, anyway. In 40k, I can at times be convinced to do like a squad or two of, you know, homebrew or like no-name chapters that are you know, like the Purple Suns or something yeah. like that. <laughs> but I have tried on three separate occasions... To do a non-Space Wolf 30K list. Uh, Just can't get there. Like Alpha Legion fell through. My uh, Black Shields fell through. I had another project. Blood Angels, maybe? I didn't work. As far as even the Black Shields, because that's kind of Mm. a... Yeah, because it was very home. It's homebrew. It's cool. I got a squad of them. They're a cool squad. If I ever played Kill Team, I'd have a Black, Black Shield Kill Team, right? Yep. Um. But yeah, no, I can't. I can't do it. I do, however, as, as of uh, like a week ago, discovered that I do in fact now have enough las guns to make my kind of Napoleonic themed militia army. So yeah. that might be just <laughs> go complete one hundred and eighty from everyone else making a new army in this edition. Just go militia with all, for- with all the cool new models, like. Here are my Warlord <laughs> Games converted <laughs> Hanoverians. Let's do this. I mean, what, your fourth, fifth uh, militia army? Sixth? Good God. Where'd you get the extra two or three <laughs> during a pandemic, I guess, huh? I, 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 I just churned them out. Just, just, you know, discovered them in piles of bits. So I wouldn't short many. And there was a period where every time when Battlegrounds had their bits day, yeah. I just like, you know, I'd get a little baggie of bits and there's always a las gun or two in there. Mm-hmm. And then they go with all the other bits and I would like forget to pull the las guns out or something. So like I, I had a couple <laughs> circulating. <laughs> Take um, a bit, leave a bit. Right. <laughs> Those were heading uh, times. And then some people like uh, my boy Zach and a couple other nerds, like they, they know I'm constantly on the lookout. So every now and again, there'll be a gift of like a couple of las guns. It's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I did the count the other day. I'm like, oh, 
I've got 150. <laughs> you got something there now. Let's do it. It's gonna three levy squadrons? Yes, three levy squads. Because <clears throat> they can go up to 50, aren't they? They can, oh, and these god. will. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Them, uh, Laz Cannon Rapier Batteries mm-hmm. for for the heavy support. Uh, and 150 Screaming Mortals um, with Rending. <laughs> Do they, yeah. Is there any way for them to get Interceptor? Uh, I feel like somebody can give them Interceptor. God, I hope like a navigator you can get an interceptor or something. Oh, you know, mm. you like there's somebody. Like it's one of the like agents sound- of the emperor, or agent of the yeah. That almost sounds familiar. Uh, I have to look because uh, I, I I remember playing the navigator, but only using its you know third eye. Yeah, because that's the third eye. Why is you the take- funniest, and that's what's <laughs> it's going the on. most hilarious. Uh, also, to give a random like give my artillery leadership ten so they don't fucking die. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, that's going to be such a dumb army. I've, I've got it all planned out. I've got, they're going to be base to base. There's going to be movement trades involved. I might even find one of those, you know, like the sticks, like they move around units in like those World War II like yeah. movies, yeah. Like some sticks, move some guys around. It'll be great. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had the army in my head for two or three years now. It's just been accumulating so many LAS guns. See, there's warp prescience, which gives you protection from enemies shooting with a minus one BS. Little stare. No, nope. at least the navigator doesn't uh, give. Uh, I feel like somebody over- does. I don't know. Not Overwatch, but maybe it, maybe it'd be something I had to pull out of like an Allied detachment or something. Want to be maximally disrespectful? Yeah, if I do. <laughs> it seems hilarious. Um, but yeah, because yeah. if you can shoot at stuff. <sighs> Well, tainted flesh. Yeah, yeah. Just tainted flesh. Gotta drop a couple dreadnoughts down there. Oh, they'll hope. have a bad time. What you got so. in there? Besides tainted flesh, like because if I, they if they can drop down and start shooting away, the dreadnoughts. Yeah, I'm just thinking what if they had interceptor? What would they uh, drop on the dreadnoughts? Last locks, like <laughs> nothing. <laughs> okay, that's what because they're what militia. Was, that's what I was getting at. The answer to that is you put the interceptor. With the three batteries of Lazcan and Rapier Destroyers. Ah, uh, yeah. And have them make you have a bad time. <clears throat> and they would. Yeah, I guess the only answer to that at that point is uh, Basilisks. Yeah, it is. That's, that's the only thing. It is. Do. Like, <laughs> congratulate, you've, you've cracked the code. Oh, shit. It's World War One. There we go. <laughs> yeah. We figured it out, boys. Where's my barbed wire? <laughs> Quick, bring on the heavy stubbers. Ah. <sighs> But they're going to be well dressed, and it's going to be a sexy army. <laughs> been been waiting years for it. Looking forward to it. Got to take some pictures. God, I don't need to start that army now. I've got so many projects on the go right now. It's just <laughs> like I feel like I've been in the hobby doldrums. It's like a lot of people have been sure. right, during the pandemic. Absolutely. Getting the hobby doldrums, don't want to do anything, and now all of a sudden, like everything is clicking. Yeah. Yep. the The kill team actually set me off a little bit. I actually I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but you know, I picked up a box of Kill Team Terrain, and built and painted it all within the same weekend. The whole box set. I was really yeah. proud of myself. It has been a while since I've done something like that. I tell you what, like yeah, that, like you said we still got all that fucking terrain at your place. Holy shit! Do next time you come over, you need to just bring an armful, and I'll just start building it. You'd have too. to. I I've discovered I can't like podcast and hobby at the same time. I just I yeah I can't either because so. Um, and like, and the other thing is like, I've got so many ideas. Yeah. Like for Titanicus. Mm-hmm. Now that like, yeah, I'll take all your twenty-eight millimeter terrain and I will start putting all that together because a part of me doesn't want to. Because like, but I've I've got this great Zomortalis board. I might need that bit for Zomortalis oh. board. But I don't gotta, care about the pits. If you just give me all the blocking walls and shit. Yeah, I know. But what if I need a blocking wall for something? Like that, that's where I'm at. Well, you'll know where to find them I'm before full, I build them. I'm full on hobby pack right at this point. Like, my old, it's bad. Um, yeah, know how that feels. Yeah, pretty sure I, I left a bunch of your stuff and my stuff at your place too. God, please get it. I've yeah, so much to it. <laughs> okay, um, maybe this weekend. Yeah, yeah, I'll swing by. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I got all that Titanicus terrain, and I'm mm-hmm. really stoked about like throwing together that board for Dave. Like, up, what was that event he ran a couple months ago? Over the yeah, summer, the Titanicus yeah. one, and like I threw together a whole board's worth of terrain in like mm-hmm. a long weekend, essentially. Yeah. And it just got me thinking, like, all right, well. This is doable. 
I can do this and I run AT events and I've got so much other terrain. Uh, let's give it a go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to be going to be good. Yeah. But again, like I've, I've now have too much hobby mojo and not enough time to hobby. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, I need that's another the week dread. of being forced to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, thanks Nick Quenga for dropping all that terrain out. We will, uh, yeah, fuck. Yeah, we will definitely uh, make it worth it for you. So much. Buy you so many beers at Nova. Yeah. Or, you know, wherever. Battlegrounds. Yeah, wherever I see you. At, <laughs> at church. At beers. Yeah. <laughs> Barkeep. I mean, pastor. Another round. <laughs> Anything else? No, man. That's all. That's awesome. all I got. Well, thanks for coming today. It was fun. Once again, another week of goodness. Got a episode of Lost Transmissions in the chamber that I need to just finish up editing and shoot down the line. That's good. We got another one coming. Yep. Yeah, I meant, yeah that's right. You guys record another one. So yeah, uh, this week, if you haven't, uh, Portals and Perils and Portents, excuse me, the Warhammer Old World podcast that Pat, Jason, and the crew are putting together came out with another episode this week. So check that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna put I was gonna put lost transmissions out this week, but I need some slow. <laughs> we we run on a very thin margin <laughs> of episodes, so <laughs> it's true. Um, I gotta pull everybody. And say, we got a podcast this week. Yeah, although, and I'm gonna put this out here, and mm. I want you to know, listeners, that Jesse nor anyone else that is a part of this podcast has heard me talk about this at all until right now. Uh, so if you never hear this mentioned again. That's my fault. <laughs> um, but uh, I know we have a lot, like, people have been kind of interested in perils and portents. So I guess mm-hmm. fantasy's having a bit of a revival. Yeah. Um, and I've recently become moderately addicted to the old Liber X books, um, like the Liber Chaoticas, the yeah. Liber Necris, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are books that's got a, just a ton of, like, cool, interesting stuff in them. Mm-hmm. That literally like a thousand people on earth have read because that just so it's a that's just such limited a hard, release. Like, Liber Necris, um, which for those of you that don't know what what the hell I'm talking about, the Liber Chaotica, um, which was produced originally as four separate volumes, one for each gods. It's kind of like, like Visions of Heresy, but for chaos. Sort of? Kind of, because they're in universe products kind of like how the imperial oh, yeah, yeah, primer yeah, yeah. is okay got it um, so the base i didn't realize that yeah so the oh, basic shit. premise of the liber chaoticas is an imperial priest of sigmar um like gets permission to write about and research a given god and its followers and its demons and all of that uh, so it's mostly from a fantasy pr- like there's kind of a generic fantasy perspective, like, oh, here are the tribes that worship yeah. chaos. Here are the cults and the empire. Uh, but there's a lot of discussion about the god and the demons sort of generally and like the warp generally. And there's always a little section in there that the priest just has his mind blown. It's like <laughs> and like the liber, the liber zinch. Um, <laughs> he he uh, meets Magnus the Red. What? Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, And he's like, yeah, I thought it was kind of funny because in fantasy, Magnus the Pious is like a hero of the empire. Yeah, yeah. Very like the sword against chaos. And he's like, "Eh, Magnus the Red, who would have thought? And they'll like, (laughs) they'll like see visions of like corn berserkers, but like they don't really know what the hell a space marine is. So it's all. Oh, I see. It's like piercing the. uh, Yeah. So they, they, they see through to the other side of the warp. Um, that's so cool. yeah, I'm thinking maybe, uh, once we see if I get sued or not, uh, <laughs> like maybe like some excerpts of that as just like short, like five, 10 minute mini episode things. Absolutely. Of, like here's a thing on the hung or wh- whatever. Beautiful. Like it's like your own Magnus archives, except yeah, like, like some like demonology. Mm-hmm. Right. And they also and there have are plenty of, there are plenty of YouTube channels that just yeah, they straight read from, stuff. Yeah, like, so it's fine. I think you'll be okay. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, and I also have the Liber Necros, which is a thing that most people don't realize ever existed. <laughs> like, like I've never heard um, of it. It's the same thing, but for undead. 
and it's written by like you know written by air quotes uh manfred von karstein okay, like yeah, one yeah. of the main vampiric lords and that gets fucking wild yeah because he talks about like vampirism of course it's all like take it with a grain of salt because it's a vampire trying yeah. to like, paint his people in the best old light right unreliable narrative every narrative. everyone is a hero in their own story sure but like he talks about like the warp and how like vampires like cut themselves off from the warp entirely which is why they need to drink blood because it's part of like getting that life getting force. like the psychic energy of the thing you're ah, killing along okay. with everything else yeah yeah um which has just fascinating repercussions yeah. throughout <laughs> everything if you're like wait you can cut a human off from the warp entirely yeah hold up hold up a I, sec that's wild <laughs> like but they can still use magic shit <laughs> uh so yeah like maybe uh maybe do some because they're they're in a ton of short little chapters uh not a lot of people know about them because again like they they came and went so quick like the liber necros they got like 500 copies and they never reprinted it um so like even if you're a big fan of the undead like i i've played undead through you know five editions and the death of the old world and like i'd never read it before i got my hand on a copy by luck like a year ago yeah uh, yeah good deal just a thought so listeners if that's something you'd actually be interested in uh let us know mm -hmm. and if you don't want to hear me talk at you about that please also let us know <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right well, once again, thank you all for listening to another episode of the Remembrancers Retreat. If you enjoyed this episode, you know, leave a leave a comment or a rating. I think that's what they call it, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever random podcatcher app you listen to us on. Yeah, however you caught us. You can also follow us on our website at rr30k.com where you can find all sorts of stuff, like the Battlefleet Heresy Compendium, Austin and Stevens' Battlefleet Gothic Crazy Love Child of Horus Heresy. And I think you've done enough editing on that, Jesse. You can throw your name in there. For okay, I just made it look pretty. <laughs> like, we just thought about things. Jesse's the reason it's in a format you actually want to read. <laughs> Steven did share the uh, the third edition uh, text on the, our Discord, which oh, yeah. link will be on, on the, the show Patreon. notes. Or just on no, the Discord. On the, on the you know? Discord. Yep. And uh, I remember I looked at that. I was like, oh boy. The ugly baby. <laughs> Been a while. Yeah. Remember, every every child looks a little squished when they first come out. And then they, <laughs> you know, get those chubby cheeks and everything's great. You can also like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm, I don't do Twitter can too they? much. <laughs> yeah. On the Twitter. They can, yeah. Yeah. I don't follow it too much just because... You'd be better off following us on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, I'm on Facebook a lot more often than Twitter. Mm. But uh, it's it's there. We do exist. Uh, yeah. You can send me a message. I, I'll probably find it. <laughs> They'll send me a link. But uh, you can find us at RR30K Podcast on both of those social media sites. You can also follow us on Instagram at RR30K. And if you'd like to support us, go over to patreon.com forward slash rr30k podcast. Once again, all these links will be in the show notes. And we'd like right now to thank all of our patrons, starting with our Legion Praetors, Alex Self, Chap Lanisar, Chris Mack, Garner Dutry of Woe, Joe from Music City Heresy, Luke Rizzuto, Matthew Boyce, Mr. Baldwick, Nick Quenga, Sar Luther, Taco Tuesday or Bus 22 Rock and Roll McDonald's, and What's Ligma? Our Legion Centurions, Aaron Maynard, Andrew N., Angry Boy, Dave Jones, Duncan, Ed, John Christensen, M. Tanzer, Gorkro, Queen Corswain, Scott LeMay, and the original Applesauce. And finally, our Legion Sergeants, Agrippina, Emily O'Hare, Garrett Lowe, Jay DeSales, M. Sear, Nick Gillen, The Zoy, and What Do I Call Myself? Once again, thank you all so much for your support, and we're looking forward to a uh, Hanging out more often on at least a monthly uh, video chat get-together on YouTube, specifically for patrons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll also have access to our patron-specific Discord. So we get right in there and have little community chats and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, it's a good time. Like I said, we'll turn those uh, patron bucks into 
upgrading podcast stuff, keep us on the air. And now that, you know, the world's maybe healing, I'm afraid to tempt fate. We're, we're not saying that. Okay. You know, I've knocked on wood. There might be, uh, yeah, cool events with cool stuff in the future, too. Let's just leave it at that. And that's all I have. So until next time, keep those dice rolling. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now. Bye.